Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com. Today's topic, Shavuot, Pentecost, Feast of Weeks. We are the Hebrew year 5782, Gregorian year 2022. Scripture references out of Leviticus 23 verses 15 and 16. You shall also count for yourselves <coughs> from the day after the Sabbath, from the day when you brought in the sheaf of the wave offering, there shall be seven complete Sabbaths. You shall count 50 days to the day after the seventh Sabbath. Then you shall present a new grain offering to the Lord. Uh, now, again, on a Gregorian calendar, we are the year 2022. The holiday of Shavuot, Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, it begins at sunset on Saturday, June 4th. So we are, what, six days away uh, the God-appointed holiday ends at sunset, May, June 6. Feast takes place in the month of Sivan on the 6th and 7th of a Hebrew calendar. And this is the Hebrew year 5782. So Sivan is the Hebrew month, 5782. So two different timetables. Now there's all kinds of implications for that. You know, and again, it gets back to, for those of you who followed the blog for some time, I'm of the opinion humanity just cannot keep time as God has directed. So of that day or hour, no one knows. I think that's part of the, the riddle of that verse. But anyway, I digress. Uh, Exodus 23, verses 14 through 17. Three times in the year you shall keep a feast to me. You shall keep the feast of unleavened bread. As I commanded you, you shall eat unleavened bread for seven days at the appointed time in the month of Abib, for in it you came out of Egypt. So this goes back to um, spring feasts. Um, so Passover, unleavened bread, uh, first fruits. None of you shall appear before me empty handed. You shall keep the feast of harvest. Or the first fruits of your labor of what you sow in the fields, you shall keep the feast of ingathering at the end of the year when you gather in from the field from the fruit of your labor. Three times in the year shall all your males appear before the Lord. So Shavuot um, uh, is one of those holidays, one of the three holidays where Jewish men are required to come to Jerusalem. Uh, the men were to make their presentation and sacrifice before God at the temple. This holiday is one of seven holidays appointed by God. Now, for those of you who want to take a deeper dive into Shavuot, Pentecost, Feast of Weeks, I got some links here. Um, click on this, part one of the nuts and bolts of Pentecost. Also, part two is down here. Click on the link and you can follow up with a little more detail in regards to what is Pentecost. So you know, in the focus today, um, you know, again, about six days out, we're going to look at two loaves of bread. Two loaves of bread are made from the new wheat harvest. The loaves are made with leaven. And again, the biblical symbol for sin is leaven. The two loaves of bread at Shavuot are the only sacraments made with leaven. Now, some people believe that one loaf represents the Jewish people and the other loaf represents the Gentiles. The loaves represent the church, which is comprised of Jews and Gentiles, sinful people, and we are saved. Yes, I'm not going to argue that point. We are saved for all eternity by the blood of Christ and our sin is covered. But despite that, we still sin and, you know, sanctification, the process of, of, of trying to become more Christ-like, but in this broken body, uh, broken, sinful world, we will continue to sin, hopefully less than what we did the day before, but we're still sinners. Uh, Jews and Gentiles are formed with the first fruits of the wheat harvest. And, and that's my point. The church, you know, we're still sinful. We're, we're washed by the blood of the lamb, but we're still broken people despite being saved by the grace of God. 
the loaves are brought and waved by the son, the high priest, before the father is the idea. And so, again, deeper look at that, Messiah, www.messiah3.org, Pentecost feast. Link there if you want to look at that in a little more detail. And to connect the dots uh, to the New Testament, Ephesians 2, verses 11 through 22. Therefore, remember that at one time, you Gentiles in the flesh, flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in the ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in the place of the two, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And so, you know, the two, the two bodies, the two loaves is the idea. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows in a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. So that, to me, kind of wraps up the idea. You know, the two, the two groups, the Gentiles and the Jews, uh, two bodies brought together by one in Christ. And ultimately it stops the, you know, two sinful groups that have historically just been naughty to each other and nasty to each other brought together in Christ Jesus. Uh, you know, again, together, sinful Jews and sinful Gentiles sealed with with God the Spirit worshiping God the Father through the sinless God the Son, which begs the question, how long before the two loaves of bread, the church, you know, comprised of Jews and Gentiles, are waved by our high priest before the Lord in heaven? You know, he, he takes us up there and presents us is the idea at some point. Um, and the two of us will become one, in Christ, through Christ, before the Father. Um, and the symbols, the symbols of those two specific things are are the loaves of bread. So that's the idea behind it. So hopefully that makes a little more sense. Um, look looking forward to being presented before the Father. So appreciate you guys following along. Now, for those of you who are interested, please feel free to share with others at paulthepoke.com. Also, for those of you who would like to become a subscriber to the blog and to the email, type your email address in here, hit the subscribe button. You'll receive notification every time we put something out. Uh, we got a few things coming up. We're also one week out from the holiday. And with every holiday, always want to be on alert. Never know when the good Lord comes to get his bride, the church. And anxiously awaiting that event. I'll be putting some stuff out from some other authors this week in regards to that as well. Interesting week from a timing perspective in regards to the sabbatical sets of seven. And of course, um, I was in this camp once. I'm, I'm open to hearing it in regards to the rapture taking place during Pentecost, Shavuot, uh, compelling arguments. Um, and to me, that's one of those things when it happens, uh, we put that in our rear rear view mirror and window. We'll be able to say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I understand how that happened now. But in the meantime, looking at it from the front side, knowing it's coming, when it's coming, 
and the timing of when it comes, that's a little trickier to understand. Finite man trying to understand an infinite God. So appreciate you all taking the time. Wish you the best. Take care. Bye.